back in the beginning of the 1970s, decided to go fishing. All I wanted to do is go fishing out of Cadwith, where my ancestors have been for many years, probably hundreds of years. Decided to get a, a 16 foot punt and a five horse outboard, went off for two years, went fishing in that, and then another two years with dad and a 18 footer, and then we had to smunt the Rose, which she was a lovely boat, built up great for, well, I had her 1976 and went on to, well, just over 12 months ago, 14 months ago, when I was crabbing all those years. From 150 pots, we went up to 400 pots. Decided to give it a go on something else. And I always wanted to catch fish with a ring net, per seine, and going around fish and pursing them up. And I experimented with a pole and a transducer and all things like that. And I had a go in the Samantha Rose with the help of Spencer Carter with a bow thruster and a generator and to hydraulics and all this. I had a go catching pilchers and I'd done it very well. I did and caught them. We had 300 stone just off Penzance Promenade, off the swimming pool. Nick Ells came with us, lovely. First catch I ever had. Well, after many other catches in her, winter come on, I decided to get a bigger boat and she was called a Penrose. Stuart Williams done her up, he used to belong to Ben Pyle, Ben Fourth Eleven. Stuart done her up and she was handsome boat. She was built up Timmouth Way for midwater trawling for sprats and Stuart had done two years doing her up because he knew deck, another engine, tanks, electrics, a lot, lovely. Anyway, got this Penrose boat from Port Leaven with help with the bank money and, and all that. We had an awful summer last summer trying to catch eat fish because they were very quick in the summer and it needs a bigger net to do it. I lengthened the net back to the original length of the Renault, even though the my boat's 30 footer. We we done it very safely and effectively, but couldn't catch a fish all summer. Eventually we went down New Lynn, end of October, when we started catching pilchards, and we caught 20 tons of pilchards in 12 days fishing during the three week period. And I'd been very safety conscious all my life in fishing. When I had to smunt the rose, I'd done lots of methods of fishing, from monofilament lining to sharking, basically crabbing and I, owed, I had a radar and, a, and which is very safe and sufficient bit of equipment, a life raft, flares and all the rest of it. So when I had the Penrose I made sure that I was safe on her. And I had the life raft again and the radar and the flares and all the rest of it but the last catch I had I didn't get back with the boat or the fish. The f she, she capsized and sunk on me Do I need a ticket for a boat which is just under 16 metres? Locally known as Nutty Noah, Martins never felt compelled to conform. He was willing to be scoffed at for trying to revive the pilchard fishing industry. The penalty of being underinsured has become apparent. After paying the bills, there is nothing left. Fishing is all he knows. He must get another boat. He's been told about a 40-foot boat that's for sale in Ireland. So he's arranged with the bank for an overdraft to cover the deposit. He will worry about the rest of the finance when he returns. On the way to Ireland. <laughs> Rather a lot of signs to read at the moment. <laughs> Bridge is over there, but we're going the wrong way. I think we are. Hang on. Not being familiar with the roads outside of Cornwall, and after many wrong turns, Martin finally arrives at Fishguard and boards a ferry with just minutes to spare. Um. Oh, he's acknowledging me coming in here. Hey, she's 
moving. Jed. The following morning, Martin sees a boat that he's travelled all the way from Cornwall for. His first impressions is that with a tidy up and a splash of paint, she's ideal for his needs. Central for me to have the track in when I'm pushing. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'll show you. Slick, that's, that's just to tell you that it's not to be relied on as a navigation. It's a navigation aid, it's not the real thing. Yeah. They don't want you to be saying, oh, I'm grand all the time looking at it. Like. That's how um, Rachel so, Harvey sank down to the Sillies. I think probably they was, they was going by the plotter. As, as gospel, uh, as life, yeah. The rock moved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cheers. Man. Hi, I hope you have a good journey now. The time of the year. Martin is relying on the bank to come up with the remaining balance. This could be a major hurdle. Now I'm going to leave the truck and get on up to the bank and see them, put it to them how it's been done. And a very good friend of mine, Phil Lockley, has done a really good job on presenting it all in proper typewriting from a computer. So it's self explanatory, the same as the graph but I'm very nervous, but also very confident. So let's hope the next time you'll see it, it'll be Reba, Reba. <laughs> well, good luck, Marlon. Oh, thanks, old buddy. <laughs> oh, never mind you. Oh well, what we didn't look forward to now, Jed's a pasty. They've, they've, unfortunately, they won't give a loan on 100%. They need, they need some collateral, need me to put down a minimum of £30,000. So I've got to find, I've got to find £30,000 somewhere or something or some kind person to give us hand. The, interest on the, the bank has suggested to Martin that if his wife will put her house as security, so they may reconsider his application. 40% of it, 40% of it, uh, no, 40,000 pound of it would be uh, less interest and I wouldn't have paid so much back. So perhaps it'll work out right in the end. I've got to get around Sally now. <laughs> I'm pasty. That's the next thing. Get around and get pasty, pretty. All right, cheers. Right, I mean, we've we've done quite a bit of thinking about the situation, and as we need collateral to borrow this money for the boat, and Sally, my wife, doesn't want to put the house up, seeing we're married, we thought we'd go about it in this fashion. So we've got to go to the registry office and get a divorce, <laughs> get a divorce papers, and say yourself, half of the house is mine. I'm sorry, I'm putting it up for a new boat. <laughs> Martin has convinced his wife to have the house valued in the hope that it would provide enough collateral for his borrowings. Despite this, the bank are still not willing to lend the amount needed. In desperation, and with the help of other fishermen, all who can relate to Martin's situation, a salvage operation is mounted. After inspection by divers, the Penrose appears to be in a repairable condition. A large beam trawler has offered to lift her from the bottom. Um, plan is that this year will go through the boat, actual boat, and then we can tie a rope past the ear or wire fast to there to lift her up. Hopefully get the Penrose back up again and working. How important is it to, to get the Penrose oh, back up? Flipping. Really important because I ain't got no other boat, Daddy. Luckily, um, Billy Stevenson said I can 
I've wrapped one of the beamers, the biggest beamer over the other side there, the Cornish one. And that, the weight of the boat in the water is probably not so heavy as what their beams are. It's important so as I can either get her back working again and or sell her. Hopefully I can borrow some money to uh, again to try and get her back in a working order so I can sell her to to earn work, earn some money on the sale of the boat, which may well be helpful in the buying the other one. Oh. On the video, as as we've seen, it's the transom and the starboard side, the keel and the stem. That's all all right what the port side is like I wouldn't like to say I would have thought it would be wore away quite badly and have to replace I would guess six planks and four frames I guess that they're taking a the beamer out tomorrow at about eight nine o'clock because the tide's going back so she not seen she'd be outside the harbor because she can't go out low water or come in low water and uh, then we'll go out we we'll go out after dinner Hopefully then, and get her up in the afternoon and come in here high water. Probably five o'clock. We could well be coming in with her five, six o'clock and put her on the put her on the beach over the other side. Martin finalizes the details with the ship's owner, Billy Stevenson. On the left hand side, should have been made past the winch. You don't come away. It is. The winch, the winch, it's got a square bit of pipe on it there that's sticking out. So we got the winch on one. Martin is concerned. It's not going to plan. And it doesn't look good. Penrose has come to the surface. Stern first. And that's taken all the strain. Devastation. All Martin can do is watch as Penrose breaks up and is reclaimed by the sea. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get her back. She slipped and went back down in the water again. But we got the winch back and we may be able to get bits and pieces. But thank you very much. Billy and the crew members of the Cornishmen to try their best and a few other lads, divers and things who have been giving me hand. Cheers.
Two weeks later, with a break in the weather, divers attach new lines to the wreck of the Penrose, and a second lift is tried. Much weight on it! I reckon we got all of them, Harvey. If we made past the net and took in Charlotte, we're going to give it a bit of a yacht or something. This time, the lift is successful, and she is towed slowly into Newland Harbour. Finally lifted onto the pier. Slag it down! Slag it down! Some chimney stack, yo. When your camera. Yeah, that's all. Nearly all in here. Come in and have a look, Jed. Even got the life life jacket back. But the thing is, as it's gone down in a lot of pressure, the bit of foam in the middle is shrunk. It should be this wide. So that won't be used again. Lots of hydraulic pipes up mothers. What else I got? Oh, loaded. I got everything back except my mobile phone and a sock and my barber coat. <laughs> everything else I got back. And, well, obviously you've got the wood and we're burning that in the fire at the moment. So I'm really pleased with the outcome. Thanks to the boys down Newland, Billy Stevenson. So hopefully, um, we might be able to stick it all back on another boat one day. Fortunately, I didn't have to get a divorce or um, anything to I Sally to put the house up for Clatsall, but we have actually now both agree putting the house up for Clatsall to get some money for this boat over Ireland, hopefully. And that that's gone all right, that's gone pretty. And we're we're we got to go ahead from the bank to subject to survey, that means the boat over Ireland is going to be taken out of water and surveyed the one of the electronic electrical things uh, which show, measures the thickness of the steel of the hull so we're going over tomorrow me and my daughter on the ferry to the same place where we've been before to see this boat so we're all we're all really excited because it's only just it's only just happened that we've been able to borrow borrow the money to do it now I've been flat out getting all the gear ready to go sharking. So hopefully when we get a boat we'll go to sea and show you how it's done and hopefully come home with some fish. So we can start paying off the boat. Oh, headache. Three weeks. It should have been a week. But we got her surveyed and the survey was good. The, the sickness of the steel was the same as what she was ten years ago. And unfortunately there was a bit of a wear in the shaft, so we had to have another propeller shaft. But, um, and that took quite a while to do, and we got pretty fed up actually. And, and eventually we got it all painted up. 
So I've been down in the bilges and been everywhere. My daughter came with me, three weeks over there, no school, flipping right on. So we painted her from top to bottom, from the front to the back. Handsome. Got lagged every day, right up to her elbows, the armpits. Stinking in bilge water, and covered in paint. And she's a lovely boat, and we had a lovely crossing coming across from Ireland. We left yesterday at 12 o'clock, well, about 12, dinner time. And we got here and come through the harbour. And it didn't take very long from the mouth of the harbour, Newland Harbour here, to the end of the new pier. And me and my daughter were crying our eyes out because there was about 30 local people, my local friends and my family was all waving. And it was an extremely emotional and wonderful time. Lots of people, including yourself, was wondering how he's getting on. So we're back now and have a day or two off and have a good sleep. Have a past year or two. <laughs> Painted the white floats. Got some day glow paint. Got 400 of these to do and put in some paint on so I can see them when we go sharking. Only another 399 to go. <laughs> What's the idea of the life jacket morning? Well, you'll never be sure. <laughs> Might sink. I haven't taken off for six months. <laughs> no. I Put it on to rest on them. Leaning on this is better than keeping the body up with me back. I thought it's quite comfy. I just I blow the whistle, I'll have a bit cup of tea, saffron bun and a cup of tea. No, I, I fear for you sometimes. I mean, do you really sort of realise the gravity of the situation? You know, your 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 house is on the line. And you know, I mean, to be fair, this is a, a, a complete new venture as regards to the size boat and everything else, but um, I, I just hope it works out for you, but uh, are, are you sure in yourself? If I stayed here, I was going to sink anyway. And I know if I sink, the bloody house, the house is going to go. <laughs> but we'll, we'll just have to go to sea and try. <laughs> Take plenty of... Plenty of grub and <laughs> milk and other necessities, necessities of survival. See if we can catch these sharks. <laughs> life, can be, life can be a bit unpredictable. <laughs> yeah. Two months have been good. Two months trying to get the registration through. And been very frustrating too. Let me tell you. The uh, the boat, seeing it come from Ireland, it had to come off the registration over there. But it's not just one place registration, it's two, because it is a fishery place. So like the MAF in this country. And they had to get written permission from the owners, the last owners, then that go in their system, and they do it to knock us off the registration in Ireland. They then had to tell the MAF registration, or their equivalent, they had to tell the Irish registration people to knock it off the Irish list. And they had to tell Cardiff, who do the registration, that it's knocked off. Then another ball game. It had to come off the come on the British registration which was quite, took quite a while to do because of the, the system. Once you get in the system, it's a three weeks backlog. And when yours come to the top of the pile, they deal with it. If you've got a problem, which generally has, go to the bottom of the pile again. And so it's taken two months to get the registration so as I can get a license to fish. Otherwise it, it would have been illegal, and I never done any illegal fishing. I'm going to give it a go with with lines to see if I can catch some sharks. Cause nobody's hardly doing it in this country. Just a few boats. Now this this lot here is bait. 
and it's octopus. See that, can you? Yep. Yeah, here they are with their tentacles hanging down here, and it's head here, and his little eyeball in here. I think his eye or something else. Hopefully I'll be going to... I got a, a, a good feeling. Oh, there's some more octopus here. A good feeling that towards Lundy would be a good way. Some of this last, this last week or two that I've been thinking that finding out where these fish are. There's some more octopus there. Look. It's a better shot, isn't it? I was going to go today, but the forecast was not very good, so I haven't gone. Oh, by the way, there's Sandy will slip. At long last, two months after purchasing the Prevail, Martin can legally go to sea. With large borrowings and stopped from fishing because of red tape, this first trip has to be successful if Martin wants to stay in the fishing industry. <laughs> Only 10 hours to go and Martin is pleased to be passing his first landmark, the long ship's lighthouse on his starboard beam. Six hours into the journey and Martin's low boredom threshold comes into play. Spent a long time and see your eyes go funny. Beagle's nose going. I read in a book the other day, you know, that the word poor beagle can go back to the Roman times. 
and he said that it's, the book was saying that it was very much like a pig, so they called it uh, poor, poor beagle, poor or something like that. You know, it means nose like a pig. So it'd be nice to catch one to have a look, see what they look like. <laughs> We'll soon find out tomorrow at dinner time. We'll have one then, perhaps. Morning. Bit fresh. Forecast was for six, which is fairly rough. But hopefully, we'll be able to get something in the water and see if there's any here. Hopefully, we'll be able to anchor up the west side of Lundy for the night. So, see you later. God, got salt in the knee. Oh, riva, riva, riva. I didn't notice that. <laughs> How they got a catalog? So we'll go out and have a look again in a minute, see if there's any possibility of shutting away later on. At the back of Lundy Island, the western side, because it's easterly wind, and we're going to go north of the island, eight or ten miles or something like that. Two hours after shooting the lines away, they're pulled aboard. The only catch being one small shark and four tote. Martin is very disillusioned. Well, this is day two. The first day was absolute disaster and I didn't want to talk about it because it was windy getting up here. Wind went, we went in and anchored up, didn't we, behind the island and had something to eat. And then we, the wind went away, we went out and had a go again. But well, soon as, no sooner we got out, out to sea, the wind got up again, and it was really rough. Well, not really rough, rough enough. And that, all that awful I had, the pilchard um, hedge and banks and stuff which come from the, the pilchard works, um, made the deck ever so slippery. We had ever such a job to stand up. I thought it may have attracted a shark, but we only had that one small poor beagle, so we actually caught one went off now in the northerly direction again, hoping to um, have another go in this area before we head back. We probably, if we don't catch nothing out here, we'll probably steam halfway home and have a look around again, something like that. But I really want to spend a day and half a night looking in this area to get it well and truly out of my system. It's really, really good. A five fish, 25 hooks. There's one, that's the last one. I'm up, up, look at the rest. Right on! One and five, it was six. Six and twenty-five hooks. Reba, Reba! We nearly lost the lines, they went about three miles. No wonder with them on them, eh? I'll look for the other one now.
got Marvin. Fish! <laughs> Take it quietly. 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 Quietly, down a bit. No! Yes. One, two, three. Hup! Yeah, bugger! Reba, Reba, Reba! <laughs> Look at the size of that one! Woo! Turn around his tail! <laughs> Ooh, sorry about that, old buddy. Oh, they beautiful. God's creatures, Jed, that's for sure. Beautiful, aren't they? He'd been on the bottom left, with the sand on it. Martin was very pleased with the catch. I asked him what his comments would be to people watching this film and feeling sick, watching these creatures being caught. I don't know about this public view on cruelty, and I don't know whether there is. That's your opinion, but the um, fish die when they're in the water, whether they're in the net or whether they come in the boat. A lot of people in the country and in the world don't like things dying. I don't like things dying, especially a beautiful thing like a shark. I, I really think the shark design is probably the most efficient and the most beautiful design creature in the world. And I could probably say the same again with, to a peregrine falcon or to a butterfly. All these, all these creatures of the world are beautiful, aren't they? And the colours are like colours of a fresh blue shark is just stunning. Like a, a rook walking around in full plumage. Now, rook in full plumage, they're normally black, but if you catch them in the sun February month, when he's looking his best, before they nest, he got that purpley, greeny old blue tint on and it's handsome. So, going back to the death and the sharks, I don't think that there is a problem with the general public on the issue. There is a certain amount of feelings in certain groups, but people got to eat. If you didn't kill the cows, or the sheep, or the fish, what we all gonna be rabbits and just eat vegetarian food all the time. A lot of people like eating fish. So you gotta face up to the facts that there is slaughterhouses which kill animals. And the, this country has not gone into a slaughterhouse because people are frightened and they don't like to see death, meat, blood, drip, 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 all the rest of it. I mean, we don't like cruelty, but at the same time, we like meat, so it's an interesting issue, issue isn't it? Well, there's no Further attempts at shark fishing proved unsuccessful. So on the strength of another bright idea, Martin and Sally just returned from a 200 mile round trip having bought some whelk pots. Seeing we can't go um, after pilchers, we haven't got any net, 
Seems we can't afford a net at the moment. We'll have a go see if we can catch these little old sea snails. When they're little old whelks are on the bottom, they got a they got a little sniffer sticking up, and they sniff and they sniff where it is, like this, and they suck onto it, and they skid up over the side and fall in. And when they're in, they eat the bait. But when they want to get out, they can't get out because this is stopping them. They can't, their little sucker can't keep themselves sucked, stuck on the netting. Well, we brought these welt pots back. Another new investment into another fishery. It might sound like I'm perhaps doing something different again, but I am doing something different, yes, but I've got to do it because the license I have it's a Category C license. It's, it's fishing isn't quite as simple as some people may think. You can get a Category A and a Category B and a Category C. Category A, from what I can gather, you can catch fish which are on pressure stock and the math will dish out um, figures of what you're allowed to catch and you've got to chuck the rest away. It's, I mean, you, talk for hours to this about that politics but the category C which I have I've been told that I can catch shellfish whelks is one of those conger eels or ling bass and mullet are in in those as well which I'll be able to hopefully catch with that that net which I'm going to put in the boat but I certainly got to find something to catch every day to get myself working Martin arranges to meet a local crab fisherman at Helford, who's been finding whelks in his crab pots. The potential buyer needs to know the meat content in order to offer Martin a price. It will save a lot of time if Martin can get the whelks analysed at this early stage. Day's work. Day's work. Yeah. Critters. Is that what they're looking for? We don't know. I hope so. They aren't reddish, are they? No, no red in them, are they? Let's hope they aren't dog whelks. He reckons they're common whelks. A dog whelk is smooth. Well, they aren't smooth, are they? They're ever so rough. I reckon they're the critters. Could well be my future here, Jed. I wonder what they taste like. Ah, oh, Christ, my what they taste like. Not bad. I didn't even say ouch, did you? <laughs> Still wriggling now. <laughs> Animal rights people will be on me, wouldn't it? <laughs> Very much like a prawn, if you ever had a raw prawn. If you ever had a raw shrimp or prawn. Yeah. Like that, I mean, tough. Rubbery. Pepper's a rubbery. I think that up now he's in there. Oh, look at all that slime there. Oh! Only good shy ones, John. Oh, thank you. my bugger he's in. You carry on. I try lots of things, Mark. Right? You try that. I'll put it off there. Yeah. I've seen enough. I'm off. <laughs> I'll still be chewing time I get home. Ha <laughs> ha! Chris has phoned me. Martin now needs to contact the buyer and get the sample to Wales for quality test. Oh yes please, could you ask him to give me a ring regarding sample of whelks? Yes, yes. No. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, not, not lately, no, no. Well, could have done. You have you? You have. Yeah, there we are, see. <laughs> oh, like winter, yeah. Time? No, I've got time. Yeah, I've got tea here, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stirring it my mitts.
pen actually. Making sure he got some sugar in them, but I can't feel that. Probably dissolved. I know it's bad for me. Lots of things are bad for you, aren't they? Mmm. Well, it's been very nice talking to you. Yes, I am. Yes. Yeah, you also. Yes. Okie doke. Goodbye now. There isn't anybody there really. <laughs> All I can hear is a bzzz. The orchestra's gone. I love the white rose in its splendor. I love the white rose in its bloom. I love the white rose so fair as it grows. It's the rose that reminds me of you. Remind me of you. Oh, I'm glad it's your phone, Jed. It's costing you a fortune. <laughs> And we'll put one charge here, <laughs> another charge there, and perhaps one there. We'll detonate that at New Year's Eve. Oh, that's all right. All right, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Oh, thanks, Jim. Give me a ring tomorrow morning. Right on, Jed. Well, here we are again down Newlin. We're doing a bit more work on a boat, a lot more work actually. Since we spoke last, we've had a, a phone call from the buyer from these, from these whelks up Wales, and he said they're the right kind because we sent a sample away, remember, from the man up Elford? Sent that sample away, he phoned up and said, right on, that's just what the doctor ordered. Top TV. <laughs> yeah, after after all these weeks now putting up with gales and all this welding, we're actually ready. Which is pretty. I've got loads of bait up on board. And when when it's in the morning like this it uh, reality in the poor light of day in the coldness of the mornings is it home a bit more too doesn't it because it you think flipping heck what have i done here and i haven't burnt any very much yet the uh pots are on board and we bait them up and put them in the water and let's hope, hope for the best but certainly in the morning i got very mixed feelings with with what i gotta find to pay off for this loan and uh, it would be all it would have been all too easy to sit on my butt and go on the doll but I'm glad I done the right thing and when the sun come up later on I'll be even more positive but in the morning he's he's a bit more worrying than what it would be in the day because in the day you've got other things to do haven't you you've got other people around to give you confidence and the ones that don't give you confidence or chat in a way whatever
appears a pig in the mud. Going over all right. This one here is looking pretty, isn't it? All coming back to me now, what I learned in Ireland. Pretty one a bit calmer. Four, five to six. They're giving seven to eight. So if we can get this one over the side, that'd be nice. See how we get on, it's quite, quite workable. Till I fall over. I can't see what I'm doing because the lights are packed up. <laughs> a long day, 16 hour day. All the gears in the water, what we wanted to put in. Six strings of pops, of welt pops, and it must be three strings of 40, three, four, that's 120. And, uh, well, 250 pops, I suppose, something like that. But it got a bit rough in the end, didn't it? But I'm glad we've done it now. Lots of bait in there. We'll give them a couple of days now. A couple, three days, perhaps, and see if there's any whelks. Hopefully we'll film them coming up. Because of poor weather, it's four days before the pots are pulled aboard. A lot depends on a good catch. Gun or a, a big piece of wood just smack me on the back of the head when I'm walking up the quay. Yeah, the, the first one was 22 welts for 44 pops. Next one had about six in it, another one had about three, another one had about one. Yeah, and the last one here, three mile boy again, must have had about 20 and 20 or 30 in it. And all the bait still in there and really really bad news. Today may have been a disaster but there was worse to come. The um, 
outcome of this well fishery doesn't look all that good and uh, the future don't look all that good at the moment the uh, last 25 years fishing in Cadwith has been grand I've seen the pilchards and uh, caught them got another boat and sank got another one put my house up got this other one got this prevail a lovely boat couldn't afford a net because she was more expensive the license for her was more expensive than what we thought but on top of that without worrying too much about it is uh, we've got a first same fleet from Spain exploratory fishing here and more to come next summer don't look very good do it Because of licensing restrictions and the threat of the Spanish fleet, Martin isn't sure what to do next. He decides to bring into action a net that has been stored in his loft for many years. The size of the mesh means, however, that it won't catch pilchards. Well, what do you uh, think of the situation so far, Sally? Well, it's a right old struggle. We keep on trying new things. Just hope that the next one will work. Just want enough, really, to pay off the standing orders and direct debits each month. I'm not worried about luxuries and things like that. Just keep on the right side of the bank. Sally and Martin's wedding reception. I was born and bred in London, never thought I'd marry a fisherman and have my wedding reception in a fisherman's loft. We did, didn't us? Yeah. I had a really good time. Best wedding ever, wasn't it? Yeah. People still talk about it now, 16 mm. years later. Yeah, smashing. Over 100 people. 180. 180, was it? Mm. Gosh. And 200 chicken legs. <laughs> <laughs> 200 pints of Blue Anger beer and 80 pints of own brew. Yeah. Mm. Lots of wine. But you didn't think you'd be pulling a net out from here, do you? No, I certainly didn't. Well, perhaps it'll catch lots of bass and mullet or something like that, seeing we can't afford a pilchard net. Yes, that's right. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Anyway. And hopefully we won't sink again. Yes. Financially and not physically this time. Yes, that's <laughs> right. Yes. Thank you for your help anyway. That's what I did.